Hi, I'm Nitham, a software engineer on the People Plus AI research team at Google. Today, I want to talk to you about the explorable What Have Large Language Models Learned by Adam Pierce. Explorables are interactive blog posts that we hope teach machine learning concepts in a fun and interactive way. So what are large language models? Large language models are tools that have been developed by machine learning and artificial intelligence researchers to help computers better understand natural language, things like human text and human speech. They're used in a bunch of different applications, from translation to text generation, like writing articles, to interacting with virtual assistants. Today, we're going to be studying one of the earliest versions of these large language models called BERT. And we're going to be asking it to play a little game with us. We're going to give it a sentence in English and give it a blank and ask it to fill in its best guess of what goes in the blank. So for example, we start with the sentence, to be or not to be, that is the blank. And Bert's best guess for what fills in that blank is question. And if you're familiar with Shakespeare, that seems like a pretty good guess. But the great thing about explorables is everything is interactive. So you can click on a different word and see that it fills in this word with B correctly. But this word, it fills in with person, which is not the correct answer in this case. It's not even grammatical. So we might wonder why the large language model makes such a simple mistake. Also, you don't have to use the sentence that, that we wrote. You can write your own sentence. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write the sentence blank wrote Romeo and Juliet, click update sentence, and see how Bert fills in the blank. And it correctly fills in the blank with the word Shakespeare. Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet. But how does Bert know this? Well, Bert was trained exactly on this task. It was given sentences from books and English Wikipedia and other digital sources, and given blanks in those sentences, asked to fill them in. When it got the blanks wrong, it was given the correct answer in order to learn better. And so it learned to make statistical associations between words in those sentences to figure out what words in English were associated with one another. We're going to try and use further experiments to learn a little bit more about the associations that it makes. So before, we only had one sentence where we were asking Bert to fill in the blank. But now we're going to give it two sentences, and we're going to use something called templates. Templates are sentences which are identical, except for one concept which has changed between them. So in this case, we have the, the sentence, in Texas, they like to buy blank. And below, we have the sentence, in New York, they like to buy blank. And by seeing how Bert decides to fill in those blanks, we can learn a little bit about the kinds of words it associates with places like Texas or places like New York. So for example, in Texas, they like to buy beer, horses, and cattle. And in New York, Bert thinks they like to buy clothes, books, and art. So again, these are associations that it's incorporated based on the statistics of all of the sentences that it's seen. Because this is an explorable, you can run your own experiment. So as before, we have the two sentences, in Texas, they like to buy blank, and in New York, they like to buy blank. And on the graph on the right, we show each word based on how likely it is to appear in each of those two sentences. So words that are higher up are more likely to appear in the top sentence, and words that are further right are more likely to appear in the bottom sentence. So in Texas, they like to buy blank. Bert is likely to associate that blank with words like beer, land, and cattle. Whereas in New York, they like to buy blank. Bert is likely to associate that blank with words like clothes and books. But feel free to change the experiment to whatever you like. In Texas, the weather is blank. In New York, the weather is blank. And again, we can see that in Texas, Bert thinks that the weather is associated with words like dry, humid, and hot. Whereas in New York, Bert thinks the weather is associated with words like cloudy, cold, and warm. So it's built some of these associations, again, purely from the st statistics of the sentences that it's seen. Now we're going to investigate these associations more deeply and see how they can sometimes be incorrect. So let's start with a simple task. Let's give Bert two names and ask it what year these people were born. So we say Lauren was born in the year of blank, and Elsie was born in the year of blank. And again, we have the same graph as before, where the higher a year is, the more likely it is to be associated with the top sentence, and the further right a year is, the more likely it is to be associated with the, with the bottom sentence. And here we see that Bert associates the word, the, the name Lauren, with much more recent times, like 2000, 1999, 1995, 1993. And it associates the name Elsie with much less recent years, like 1800, 1850, and 1840. So based on a person's name, it's made an association about potentially their age. And again, 
or it doesn't have an access to any true facts about people or their ages. It's just inferring this from the text of sentences where it's been asked to fill in the blanks. This can go even further. In this next experiment, we ask Bert to associate names with occupations. So we give it the sentence, Jane worked as a blank, and Jim worked as a blank. And we see that it associates the name Jane with occupations like waitress, nurse, and teacher. And Bert associates the name Jim with occupations like waiter, carpenter, and mechanic. And again, it's inferring these associations from the text it's seen on various books and Wikipedia and other digital sources. But we might be concerned that if it takes these, these associations and carries them forward to downstream tasks like translation, interacting with an AI assistant, or writing articles, it might introduce gender bias into these tasks. Another example where this can occur are if you show it sentences like, the new doctor was named blank, and the new nurse was named blank. And again, you see it associate words like Mr. with the top sentence uh, with the occupation doctor, and words like Mrs. with the bottom sentence with the occupation nurse. And again, this could point to a degree of gender bias that the language model carries. So what can we do about this? There's a lot of research that's being done on improving large language models. And there are many versions of models that are much more sophisticated than BERT. But even with BERT, new versions are coming out that are trying to improve on the gender bias that has been discovered. For example, a model called Zari took BERT and retrained it on a larger data set where for every gendered noun, like boy or aunt, um, it would include another sentence in the training data that had a gendered partner noun. So it would take a sentence like, the lady doth protest too much, and it would add an example for Bert to look at, the gentleman doth protest too much. And here, in this example, we compare the two models, Bert and Zari, with these two sentences, the nurse performed CPR even though blank, the doctor performed CPR even though blank new. And again, if we look at Bert, we see some of the gender bias we've seen before, where the word she is associated with nurse, and the word he is associated with doctor. Now, when we go to Zari, because of the way it was trained, that association is much reduced, and he and she are almost equally associated with both sentences. And so this gives us hope that we might be able to better train these models to improve um, the biases that they carry. This was just a small introduction to different concepts in large language models. If you'd like to learn more about large language models, run your own experiments on these models, or learn about other machine learning concepts, please check out our website at pair.withgoogle.com forward slash explorables. And yeah, let us know what you think. Thank you very much. <laughs>